This is Dom from Black Toad Studios and this is a retro codex review. This is a series going through and reviewing old codexes, some of which I've owned and others I haven't. And today we are going through, that's right, the second edition Orc Codex. I've been looking forward to this one. It's one of my favourites. I've uh, got some uh, good memories of this one. So um, let's get started. First off, this codex was released back in 1994. So uh, doing the, the quick maths there, little 11 year old um, uh, Dominic thoroughly enjoyed this codex. Um, I don't think I had it when it first came out. In fact, I think I picked this up when the um, editions were changing and there was a new Orc Codex and basically Games Workshop did a big sale and got rid of all of their old, old books and I just picked up so many old codexes then um, just really for lore and uh, artwork and as you can see here from the artwork it's pretty incredible here definitely Orcs um, from a different era as it were as you can see here Orcs have definitely changed a lot over time probably got a little bit more of a different aesthetic than we're used to. So on the cover here, we can see, I mean, I absolutely love this one because of the stomper in the background. Or Gargan, I think maybe, uh, I will say that is a stomper in the background with his big green eyes peering over and a dark angel there getting trodden on with a little uh, squeak hound. Such a cool codex cover here. Um, so this artwork, I believe, was Mark Gibbons. Um, just looking down, right down into this corner here, uh, just by the GW symbol, you can kind of see his signature merged in there. So Mark Gibbons is normally quite easy to pick out because of the signatures, uh, very distinctive. So open up here, and some inside cover art there. The rules here were by the uh, the great Jervis Johnson. Um, I'm sure if he ever watches this video, it's um, definitely going to boost his uh, ego somewhat. So this codex here, it's not my original one which I purchased. This has been um, lent to me by um, Lee uh, Hunt, a friend of mine. He's uh, also done some artwork for the channel and uh, some more artwork for our events coming up. Unfortunately though, because of the global situation, our event has been postponed, but there is some fantastic artwork he's done for us and I really reckon you um, should check it out when it's up and running. So a little uh, plug there for uh, Lee, friend of the channel. Um, so yeah, rules by Jervis Johnson here, artwork um, by John Blanche, Wayne England and uh, Mark Gibbons there. Um, which is and as we go through, we can see some of the fantastic stuff that's going to be in here. So this codex itself is 88 pages long. In comparison to the current Orc Codex, um, so I'm talking 9th edition has recently been announced. So uh, that 8th edition, 8th edition Codex has 136 pages. So a bit of a difference there. Um, of course, both codexes, both old and new, have... Uh, background, rules, artwork, and uh, war gear. Or in the 8th edition, it's more down to um, uh, stratagems. So as we go through, we're then greeted by a lovely bit of John Blanche artwork there. I just, I love this stuff, this second edition artwork. Not much color art in these codexes, except for the pictures, uh, except, sorry, except for the photos. Um, but the black and white stuff is absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see here, got a signature down the bottom left. I mean, this would have been an absolute masterpiece to have. I mean, if someone ever had a, an original copy of that just sitting around, I don't know how they did it. It's, it's beautiful. I'd love to have something like that framed and put up in the studio. So as we go through, we have a bit on the Orc um, background. This is very kind of fundamental to the Orcs as, as we know them in the current law. Um, they have, of course, changed, as you can see from the artwork and the, uh, the pictures as we go through here. And uh, this is really kind of giving orcs that bit of culture, bit of clan culture. So as we go in, you can then turn to the orc clans. That was quite well rehearsed. And you can see the orc clans here and uh, a little bit of blurb on um, what each culture does, how they defined appearance, um, how they carry themselves in war and a little bit about their culture here. So you've got all the ones here that you're familiar with. And then we start going into the 
other Orc details here. So, for instance, you've got Orc Dreadnoughts here. Now, as we all know, Orc Dreadnoughts are no more. It's all Killer Cans and Death Dreads. So, they've stayed in the Orc Army, although the name has changed. A little bit about them has changed as well. And uh, you've got the Odd Boys there as well. Bikes, Buggies, Cult Speed, Orcs in Space. It's just, it's all here. And as we go through, it becomes clear that orcs obviously have changed. Their, their story has moved on since here, this time. These are the golden ages. You've got orc field artillery. And like I said before, the artwork here, like I'm just zooming in on this bit of artwork. It's just absolutely beautiful. You can kind of see where Epic and 40k mixed in. Um, back in second edition here, there were plenty of conversions. In fact, you're, you're encouraged to convert unlike the modern games workshop where you're encouraged to purchase this was more about your your wargaming projects than having to buy new models and that's not uh, a slight on games workshop it's just the way the company is now and uh, if you enjoy converting orcs were definitely going to be the army for you to pick up because they're all about the gubbins chucking stuff on stealing stuff and painting it up in orky colors as we'll get into in a little bit so here you got the tractor cannon as well um, Squid Catapult, Smasher Gun. These models were absolutely awesome for the time. They look a bit dated now, they look a bit simple. Um, of course, back then it was all kind of hand sculpted and designed rather than now it's all on computers. And we'll get into those when we get into some more of the artwork and the um, actual photos of the models. Um, so a little bit about squigs. Back then squigs were very uh, important. I mean, it's still important in current orcs, but definitely a lot more types of squigs back then than there are now. Uh, you've got the Pulsar Rocket. So if I remember rightly, the Pulsar Rocket obviously had a model and um, it turned into almost an apocalypse model, which got a bit crazy and disappeared off the radar in 8th edition. Who knows? Who knows what 9th edition may bring? Hopefully one of these. And of course, the Shock Attack Gun. This was obviously introduced back in second edition and still uh, almost a mainstay for uh, Orc players in eighth edition. It's worked its way all the way through. The model has changed, as we will see, um, from oldy schooly Shock Attack Gun to the new fangled model. And back then and now, it's, it's still a fun weapon to have. Um, and you've got all these tables here to what, what would happen. So if we go back down to foot troops here on a one, no solid lands uh, on or near the model and the attack has no effect. Two to five, the model is covered with frenzied snotlings, clawing and biting for all they're worth. Any models other than an orc or Gretchen takes one wound. Normal armor save throws apply. And six, the snotling materializes inside the body of a victim. A horrible way to die, the model is killed, no matter how many wounds it has, and with no saving throw allowed. Now, if that was uh, still going, that would be absolutely awesome. Let me turn over. Got a bit more here on Orc Mega Armor, Heavy Armor, Flak Armor, and Storm Boy Jump Packs there. So, an imp uh, important thing, I think, to uh, note on the Orc Mega Armor down here, if you read a little paragraph here, uh, what's, uh, what's more is if the Orc fails his saving throw, there is a chance that the Medi-Squig pack will save him. This is represented by allowing the Orc a second saving throw of four, five, or six. So almost the equivalent of a feel no pain. So back then, Mega Armored Knobs would have a feel no pain, a built-in built Medi-Squig to sit in there ready to, I don't know, suck out a bullet or I, I'm not exactly sure how a midi squig would work. Maybe I'll get a bit carried away and eat. Gretchen blunderbuss, so Gretchens and grots. Um, uh, orc, uh, sorry, custom combi weapon. So once again, a bit of Mark Gibbons artwork there. And uh, yeah, I love Mark Gibbons artwork. It's just quite, quite clear, lots of brilliant shading and you can just see what the model was going for there. Uh, moving across here, we've got Orcs, Gretchens, Runherds, Snotlings. So Snotlings had rules back then, and Snotlings, if you're unfamiliar with Snotlings, and you're just watching this video for a bit of insight into Orcs, Snotlings are the tiny, tiny ones of the Greenskin race. Gretchens are the small ones, and Orcs, of course, are the big ones. Snotlings tend to be um, found in Orc camps, doing very menial tasks. Um, 
and being probably commanded by uh, some some Gretchens and some uh, run herders. Um, but there you go. Across here, we've got the pain boy. I mean, look at that face. Who wouldn't trust him? If you're feeling a bit poorly, go see the pain boy. Uh, Mechaniax, or probably known as Mex. Um, very handy for repairing your vehicles. Goes into a little bit about of, um, how what use they are and what they do. Um, so if you look at the, the paragraph here, or there's like two paragraphs for Mex, and this, these two paragraphs, as throughout the rest of this book, these two paragraphs defined what a Mech does and over the years, so from 94, so you're looking at about 16 years now, they ha that has been expanded upon, that has been uh, um, added to new models, have been introduced into the mech range. And this is, I think, quite important and fundamental about these second edition codexes, that these were the ones that defined what the units are and the races are in eighth edition. Then we have the Weird Boys and the Weird Boys Warp Heads. You've got the Minders as well. Um, so the Minders essentially were kind of like bodyguards or just carers, maybe carers for the Weird Boys more than anything else. Sniffer Squeak. I think they're still in uh, Age of Sigmar actually, some of the stuff. As we go through here. Another brilliant bit of artwork there by Blanche. Uh, I mean, these are brilliant. Uh, oh, ball boys. So another thing you don't really see uh, in uh, current 40k, unfortunately. Things are kind of lost. You got orc uh, as a profile at the top. War boys and uh, uh, war boys, war boar and cyber boar. Pardon me. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see more boar, boar cavalry, more cavalry in general in 40k. That's what we need. Bring back cavalry and uh, boar boys. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, especially you've got a snake bite army. It'd be quite cool to see them rather than bikers. I've we featured a uh, snake bite army on the channel previously, uh, which featured lots of boars, and it'd be quite nice if uh, Games Workshop released something. Ogrins, yep, the guys from the Astro Militarum are here. Ogrins are uh, used as mercenaries and quite enjoy a good brawl, so they, they, they did team up with orcs back in the day. Let me move across. Uh, a couple of bits of stories there, quite interesting little stories. And we've got the Blood X Commandos. So as you can see from the artwork there, the aesthetics of a uh, Blood X Commando have changed a little bit. I mean, these are very human-esque, of course, being um, Blood Axes. They, they, they look at Umi cult and uh, kind of mimic it the best they can. So we've got a little grappling hook there. Uh, stick bombs strapped onto that side there. It's a little, uh, little woolly hat. And the models were brilliant. I remember having my Orc army back in the day and having 20 of the Orky commandos. And they were awesome. Then we've got the Storm Boys. So Storm Boys there. Um, a little bit um, of a fascist look to them. Um, I'm, to be fair, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with their current law in uh, the, uh, the recent codexes. But back in the day, they would... They'd go off and they'd join little youth camps, as it were, and uh, stomp about on parade, polishing their boots and uh, looking quite intimidating. Very unorky though, in a lot of ways. Then we've got some banners. If you like colouring in, here they are. You want some for the kids? Here they are. <laughs> sure they'd love to get hold of this and rip it apart. But yeah, back then you'd have your orky banners. You could photocopy that. You could go down to your local shop, photocopy it for 10p, come back and then cut them out and paint them or use some crayons, whatever you want to use. Um, and here he is, the big guy himself, Fracker. Jeez, he's huge. Um, so with Fracker there, you've also got uh, Makari. Uh, Makari obviously featured it in second edition and they uh, unfortunately had a bit of a demise and got sat on, the rumor is, Fracker sat on him and he disappeared up until the late eighth edition and he reappeared. Uh, you've also got Zodgrog here. Uh, as far as I know, Zogrog, um, pretty much, he, he remained in the codexes for a while and disappeared. Um, but back here, he's a, a runt herder. And uh, I think he makes like super grots, if, I'm, if I remember rightly. So quite a cool model as well. Look, I mean, the detail on him is pretty cool. Um, currently, at the moment, I am working on a, a side project, painting a blood axe um, uh, boss. 
and a uh, very cool model from 89 that I'm working on. Not because I'm doing an all Kami, just because I really like the model. Then we go through some of this artwork here. And as you can see, like the, the way orcs are painted and depicted back then has changed dramatically. They seem a lot more fun and a lot more heavy metal um, than they do now in current 40k, or they have for the, the last few editions. They've got this more of a war-torn look. Back then it was a bit more glam rock than uh, anything else. <laughs> so you've got the Blood Axe Commandos here, a bit of Blood Axe um, artwork here, and on the back of the Orcs you have like the little icon, I can't think what it's called, um, I'm sure it'll, I'll read it up in a second. But the, the, yeah, they've got a little thing on the back just to depict who it is. Uh, Storm Boys, so as I said, a bit of a Hmm, bit of a late 30s European military look going on here. And uh, I, I quite like the aesthetic, it looked quite cool. Um, obviously, they've changed quite a bit, and imagine having them in your current 40k Orc Army. I'm not sure they'd fit quite nicely. I mean, you could definitely tell the difference if you uh, had them all lined up. Next up, we have the some of the, the guns here. So we've got the tractor, uh, tractor cannon up here, quite very simple model. Couple of Grot uh, crew there. Uh, then we come down here, we've got the Scorcher. I, I had one of the Scorchers. Uh, I think it was a newer model than that because uh, this looks like it was a metal based one rather than the plastic. Could be wrong, I think that's a metal one. These Orcs actually, I'm um, going on a little um, tangent. I had loads of these Orcs back in the day. Uh, probably, uh, probably about 30 of them. I picked them up second hand in a shop and as a kid they were brilliant absolutely loved them because they're just so different and it kind of looked like games workshop almost went backwards when they did like, the goth orc releases when they had all these cool models so they were these were plastic i think some of these were plastic or they definitely did a plastic series where they were different um anyway moving on we've got the shock attack gun here and you've got some snotlings so the snotling ammo as depicted here. Uh, these were also used for Warhammer Fantasy, so these are definitely not the, the any 40k equivalent. Um, once again, Games Workshop there going, look, you can use them for both. You don't have to have it with a gun. They can be used for both. And uh, for my Warhammer Orc and Goblin army, I did have several bases of Snotlings, because these are all metal. This was what quite, which was quite cool. And I think they had the little things that came through, so you make a hole in the base, stick them in. Um, you've got the Smasher gun there. Keep going on. The Goth Orcs, lads, 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 and the Freebooters. So we're saying about glam rock orcs, and you can't get much glam rock. Them Freebooters, look at them. Yeah. Do you want to be a Mar Gang? Um, those who get that reference in the UK will understand that that's probably not a great reference. Um, Goth Orcs here. So it's all about wearing black, but very obvious here. There's a lot of red going on here, so they're not proper Goths. And as we, oh, look, so there we go. So the thing about the orcs, snap fit orcs, who didn't have these, eh? Who didn't have loads of these lying around uh, with the axes getting snapped off every five minutes? And I'm sure at some point we'll come across some, uh, some grots or Gretchen. So I've rehearsed this, but going back through it, I absolutely love going through these again. Uh, right, so once again, yeah, we've got the, Classic Gretchen models here. That one there. Just some, I, I still see these appear on the battlefield from time to time. Yeah, uh, uh, events. So they are still, there's loads of them. Gretchen there. We've got the Orc Dreadnought. The old classic Orc Dreadnought. Pure metal. That could knock out someone if you, if you just dropped it onto uh, someone's head or threw it at them. It's definitely a lot of weight in those. And back in the box set that was released, you had the cardboard cutout. Hey, right. how good was that? Then snake bites, still very cool models in my opinion. And the aesthetics there, definitely for snake bites. So, for those who don't know, a lot of these orc models and the ones previously, you'd have the metal body, and then you'd have plastic arms there. So you'd have a little bit of posability in the model and able to do some conversion work. But generally, they are pretty cool. I mean, that snake bite uh, knob there is pretty cool. And you got the ball boys. Boys, boys, boys. Uh, you got the splatter cannon. And there you go, a bit of the death skulls there. Um, you got a very nasty looking pain boy there. So that was the heavy metal pages there. We then move on to the war gear. Um, 
So there's a bit, not, not as much wall gear as some other codexes, but there is a bit here. And um, we've got some buzzer squigs down there. Then we start moving on to the actual rules, etc., of the Orc army. So, <sighs> look at that. So, so, sorry, I'll keep going back about the artwork, but the artwork there, imagine having that framed in your, um, in your hobby area, even if you don't play Orcs, that is a brilliant bit of artwork. Um, if John, Bl uh, John Blanche ever watches this and you feel like um, donating artwork to someone and you have this lying around, you know, just feel free to give me a little call and I'll, I'm more than happy to give it a new home. So back in second edition there, it was all done by percentages rather than slots. So you, you put in your percentage for whatever you wanted. A uh, little thing here about new models, new uh, Citadel miniatures for the Orc Army are being released in the future. Details of these new models and any special rules that apply to them published in White Dwarf magazine at the same time that model is released. White Dwarf is available through all major news agents. Oh, there we go. How nice. Um, so there you go. If you want to get your White Dwarf magazine, some of you may have heard of it, go down to your local news agent and there might have some new rules in it. So another thing to, to note here, so if we go into the war gear list, a lot of these orc weapons here are not what we're used to. These are a lot of like imperial-esque um, uh, uh, weapons that haven't had the new orky stuff to it. So they almost appear like Imperial looted weapons. So you've got that hand flame, a plasma pistol, power swords. Um, so orcs still have a long way to go. And at the moment they are using uh, very umi weapons, bolt guns, flamers, melt gun, plasma gun, oh, orkies. Uh, transports, boar, cyber boar, uh, uh, bike as well. So no trucks. Let's turn the pages of time. So here we are, we go on to the character section here. So we've got War Boss, Battle Standard. So kind of still there to, in some ways, um, not quite what we're used to. Big Boss, Freebooter Captain, Drill Boss. So Drill Boss is for your Storm Boys. Uh, you've got Knobs, you've got Blood Axe, um, uh, Commando Captain, that's pretty cool. And say so a lot of these units have disappeared because of the way 40k works now. Um, it it's, it's kind of brought back a lot of the second edition stuff. Where in previous editions, we didn't quite have it. Um, you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't be able to make uh, a blood axe uh, war boss a blood axe war boss. You just say he's blood axe, and there'd be no special rules. Luckily now, Games Workshop have kind of like gone back into a lot of these uh, races and decided to go. Oh, actually, we can actually add rules to them. We don't have to simplify everything. Mechs, pain boys, weird boys, runt herds. There's so much stuff here. Orgrin leader. Oh, wow, look, all different types of organ leader. I didn't even see this. Um, weird boy, warped, Gretchen assistance. Now this one, uh, that's definitely Mark Gibbons there. It's a bit of a dodgy bit of artwork I found. Of, um, definitely the aesthetic of a um, uh, Nazi-esque orc. Who knows, maybe I shouldn't mention Nazis. Uh, then we go on to mobs. Now, important thing to remember of all these mobs here is that we have different clan mobs for boys. So you've got blood, uh, blah, 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 bad moon boy mob, uh, blood axe boy mob, storm boy core, free booted captains. And that what's interesting, you see the same point value here, but they've got different um, bonuses for being, for instance, a blood axe or for being a bad moon. As we go across, once again, you've got Discale Mob, Goth Mobs, Evil Sun, Snake Bites. So they've all got their own different entry, which is quite interesting. Uh, like I say, you wouldn't see that in the new edition, but you've got them here in this one. Uh, we've got Allies here. So a bonus, obviously, of having Blood Axes here is, da, 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 where is it? Uh, to represent this in an Orc army that includes at least one mob of Blood Axe boys may use vehicles and support weapons cho chosen from the Imperial Guard on Space Marine army list. There you go. As long as they're painted up and converted a little bit to look Orky, that is what they wanted. And that is brilliant, in my opinion. Your Orins, Orky Dreads, Snorlings, Pulse Rocket Squid Catapult, 
um, smasher gun, splatter cannon, tractor cannon, battle wagon. So you've got the battle wagon here. Um, as far as I know, it had no um, weapons, uh, not on the sorry, transport capacity. Um, war track, war buggy, not, so much stuff in here, it's brilliant. Now, you go on to special characters, you've got Nasdeg, Nasdreg here, sort of the bad moons. So he disappeared recently in one of the uh, last codexes, and uh, it's been I, I really hope he comes back in 9th edition. I think he's uh, quite a cool character, especially for the bad moons. I think every clan should have at least one special character. Um, you got uh, Captain Flashkit there, uh, Badruck. Uh, Grotznik, so we know he's still going. This Gazgal Fracker character, I'm not sure, really sure who he's all about, but yeah, he's, he's there. Um, Zogreg, Zogrod, sorry. So we've seen him, as uh, we saw the uh, model earlier. So once again, he disappeared. Wazdraka, well, Wazdaka as well, sorry. Oh dear. All these names. Uh, he was a biker guy, if I remember. Yeah, biker with a battle cannon on his bike. I mean, that's just brilliant, isn't it? Uh, he disappeared. I believe he took out a Titan once, actually, with his bike. Orky glyphs. So you got some artwork. So a lot of the orc glyphs, actually, I'd, I'd be interested to see if these compare to the modern orky glyphs. I would imagine a lot of them do. Um, and I love just going through this and trying to work out what's what. Um, you got bug eye for aliens and gene stealers there. That's, that's true, I suppose, isn't it? Um, what else we got? With some uh, tin robot, robot tin boys. So you could say Necrons are, are tins. Uh, so there's, there's some quite cool stuff here. There was, where's the Space Marine one? Umis, Umis, Umis. Let's, let's, let's. I don't know. It's there somewhere. Got a big old bit of story here. So it's quite nice, you've still got some, some stories in here. Like I said, the codex is definitely smaller than the, the uh, current codex, but it's a very cool codex nonetheless. And if you're really an Orc fan and you haven't picked this up yet, or you haven't uh, even had a chance to look at it, you really need to, because it's very important, I think, for Orc players to understand where they're from um, and uh, what, what they, they originated from, in my, in my opinion. Um, so at the back of all second edition codexes, you had <coughs> this catalogue element here, and you could buy yourself components of the orcs. So you can't really do that anymore. You have to buy the whole uh, sprue, for instance, which is a bit of an inconvenience, but you'd be able to go to these banner things, phone them up, go, look, I need this, and they'll send it through. <clears throat> and then you'd go through here a bit more, and we end up with a lot more stuff. Once again, the components of each gun. So you could convert something, you could kit bash things a lot cheaper in a lot of ways where you just go, oh, I just want this part or I need four wheels. I'm just going to go get four wheels. Um, and obviously that was like a universal code because it's got the same code for them. So you'd be able to fit both models. Well, York Dread, once again, that would uh, probably kill someone. Uh, there's a lot of metal there and you've got a little assembly part here. So if you thought you were missing something, you weren't quite sure where you were. You could look at your current model and go through it and see what you were missing, which I think is pretty important. Um, oh, I do love these old bits here. Uh, Fracker, once again, pretty solid model, as you can see. And then you've got the plastics. So I say you had plastic arms, you'd be able to fit those onto your metal bodies. And you had the golf orcs there and the Gretchen. And uh, yeah, good stuff. So, guys, that is the Retro Codex review for all second edition codex. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've definitely enjoyed going down memory lane here and I'm going to continue doing these um, episodes. So if you've got any preference of what you'd like to see next time or in the future, put a comment below. What was your favourite part of the Orc Second Edition Codex? What are your fond memories of this codex in particular? Like I said, I remember going into the shop and buying these on uh, sale and yeah, loving it, absolutely loving it. I had a big stack of them. I just go through them and just read all the stuff. And there's so much cool stuff for orcs. And there's all these hidden bits in there as well, I like to think. Um, but anyway, that is Dom from Black Toad Studios. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time. Take care.